I am Sam. I'm an artist from Dallas, Texas, and here on my channel I talk rug tufting and art, and this week we're going to get a little sticky and talk about some glue. Specifically, I'll be looking at the kinds of glue used to glue the backs of rugs after the initial tufting is completed. Just like my previous video where I compared backing fabrics, I'm looking at the top three options, which in this case are the Bond AA1132 Custom Rug Compound, Roberts 3095 Carpet Adhesive, and good old Elmer's Glue. Much like last time, I'll be comparing each material on specific criteria. However, instead of scoring them, I'm treating this more like an informed review. Having used all three of these products and knowing that they work, it didn't feel right scoring them and trying to say that one was objectively better than the other. With the backing materials, I felt justified in scoring those because they could have a visual, visual, vis, vis, vision, visual, thank you, could have a visual and tangible effect on the actual tufting themselves. Whereas with these adhesives, they're more of a secondary step in the process and is more dependent on the way that each individual artist works. And I just don't feel comfortable saying that someone's particular process is better than anyone else's. That being said, I will still be discussing price, availability, and ease of use of each one of these products. In this case, ease of use is going to cover the user experience. So I'm looking at smell, dry time, and flexibility of the finished piece with each glue. So first, let's look at price. The Bond AA1132 Custom Rug Compound, or Bond for short from here on out, is $33.50 per gallon or $0.26 cents per ounce. Roberts 3095 is $20.87 per gallon or $0.16 cents per ounce. And Elmer's Glue is $14.97 or $0.12 cents per ounce. As far as availability, Roberts and Elmer's can both be found in stores fairly easily. Roberts is going to be found at your local hardware store or construction supply store, whereas Elmer's is going to go even a step further and will be able to be found in your local grocery stores or craft stores. Bond is only available online, and because of this, I feel like it's worthy to note that since this is a heavy item, the shipping on it costs a lot more than you're probably used to. Last time I purchased this, the shipping alone was $32. That could be due to where I'm located, but I have a feeling it's due to the weight. So that is something to consider when you're purchasing this, that it's actually gonna be double the price. Moving into ease of use, I'd like to take a look at the actual user experience of each one of these glues. I think all of us have had the most experience with Elmer's glue, regardless of your tufting experience. Although the one that I'm using now is specifically the Elmer's glue all version. It is just a slight reformulation of the original Elmer's school glue that we all used to let dry on our hands just to peel off as kids. It is still your standard white PVA glue. It's still presented as being non-toxic. This version says it's great for home repairs and a variety of surfaces, yada, 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 but it does specifically mention that it works on cloth, which I think is important considering that this is like, you know, more of a cloth fibers based project. It smells like almost nothing. You have to like really shove your nose in it to get a whiff of anything whatsoever. When I use this, I don't really feel like I need to wear gloves or worry about ventilation. However, to be fair, the safety data sheet for this does recommend the usage of protective clothing. That being said, this does clean up very easily with soap and water as long as you get to it before it's dry. To me, Bond is very similar, although this is an actual industrial product, so I do make sure to wear gloves when I use this. It's slightly thicker and a little more opaque than the Elmer's glue, um, but it dries down to a very similar, like milky, clear, semi-transparent look as the Elmer's. It has a scent, but it doesn't smell like anything. It's very inoffensive. And cleanup wise, you can wash this off of your spatulas and squeegees really easily with just soap and water as long as you get to it before it dries. Roberts is the thickest of all of them and the most viscous when you use it. It's a light beige color, but then it darkens as it sets. This also has a scent and it's slightly more apparent than Bond, but it's still not a super loud, offensive smell that has me rushing to open the windows or anything, but you can smell it. The easiest way to clean this one off of your squeegees or spatulas is to wipe off as much as you can with like a paper towel or something, and then use a product like Goo Gone or Goof Off or any of those adhesive removers. Using soap and water doesn't really get it all off and you'll be left with a very sticky residue otherwise. 
None of them are particularly difficult to use in any way, shape, or form. You just kind of have to change your approach. So for like Bond or Roberts, I like to use a spatula or even just my gloved hand to spread it on there. Whereas with the Elmer's, because it's so much more runny and pourable, I prefer to use like a paintbrush. As far as dry time, Elmer's says that it has a 35 minute dry time. I don't really feel like that applies to tufting because you have to apply so much more than the thin layer required for it. Even when I put a fan on it, it will try to create more of like a crust and then I can tell that underneath it is still damp because it soaks into the yarn more than the other two. Bond has a listed dry time of two and a half to six hours and they even recommend right on the label that you can put a fan on it to help it dry faster. I've done this many times and it works great. Now, looking at Roberts, Roberts is interesting because it doesn't list a dry time. So what it has is a, let me double check this before I embarrass myself. What it has is a working time of 40 minutes and then an additional 24 to 48 hours of cure time. After those initial 40 minutes, Roberts begins to I don't wanna say dry because that's, I don't feel like that's what it does. Like, yes, it's drying out, but more than anything, it becomes progressively more tacky. To get it to a dry point where it is no longer tacky, at least for me, for me, where I live in my weather conditions can take days. I do usually put a fan on it to speed up the process, but even still, I like working with it when it's tacky. Not so tacky that it's like sticking to everything, but just tacky enough that it still has some grab to it because I fold in my edges and I can just stick it right to itself and don't have to worry about going back in with a glue gun and adding that extra step. I have these swatches from when I initially did these tough things and there's still some tacky, there's still some stick to them. If I leave them sitting up against something face down, they do start to stick to it. And it's been month, month and a half since I did these and that's still how they are. So I think that's just the nature of this project product. It's not supposed to be exposed. It's supposed to be used for installing carpet. So what do you wanna do? Flexibility. Flexibility I feel like is important, especially when it comes to shipping your pieces. When it's more flexible, sometimes it's easier to fold and roll and get into <coughs> <coughs> not dying. Flexibility, so I think flexibility is really important. It's something to consider when you're looking at the application of your products or looking at shipping your products. If you need something that's going to retain its shape because it's for a wall hanging and you don't want it to flop around a lot, you're gonna be looking for something that has a bit more of a rigidity and stiffness to it. So looking at that, of all three of them, Roberts is no doubt the most flexible. It is loose and foible and flops around like a fish and you know it's super easy to roll up and get in a package fold it all around willy-nilly it is no big deal bond and elmer's are both a lot more stiff so you're gonna get a lot more rigidity out of your bond and elmer's the elmer's is slightly more flexible than the bond but they're both still pretty stiff you can roll them it does take more effort. You can't roll it as tightly as you would like the Roberts. If you were trying to fold it, you might get that first fold, but anything past that is pretty difficult. Um, I'd say that with both of them. Yeah, you can roll both the Elmer's and the Bond. Again, there's gonna be a little more rigidity than you're getting with the Roberts. It's like, look at that. I just have my finger bracing the back of it and they're both like stiff. So this is Bond, hence the B. This is Elmer's, hence the E. And yeah, like they're both pretty stiff. Whereas I take the Roberts with those same two fingers and you can see it's like already wobbly sausaging. When I did these test patches, I did test each glue on every backing material because I wanted to see if it made a difference. From what I can tell, it doesn't really make a difference which backing material you're using with which glue. One thing I have been trying to take into consideration, and this will be a more long-term thing, I don't really have an answer for it now, is the longevity of each one of these materials. The bond adhesive is the only one that's actually intended for the construction of rugs. Like it's actually intended for the secondary backing and in the repair of backing like older rugs. 
Roberts is really a carpet adhesive. Like it's meant to adhere carpet to a substrate, like to the floor and then not move at all. And then Elmer's of course can be used. It's school glue. You could use it for anything. I will still be washing these in a later video because I want to know if what it takes to break them down since Elmer's literally touts itself as being washable. I don't have high hopes for it, but I'm still interested to see how all of them turn out. But beyond that, that is how Bond, Roberts, Elmer's, all of them work. So if you've been wondering what's the difference and does it matter which one you use to finish your tufted pieces, now you know and can make an informed decision. I'm Sam, I tested all of that, and you should make something too. Sam made that.